Hey guys, so I know I've been away for a while, but I am back now. As promised, I'm going to be working on putting out content. So for those of you that don't know, I stepped down as the leader of Exile and we actually reformed with the leadership team, taking the guild in a different direction and becoming Summit. So as of now, I no longer have the same commitments towards the guild, which allows me to put out more content like this. So let's get started. Now in this video, we're going to cover one of the best ways to make money if you're a newer player, if you have a limited amount of pets, or if you just want to make some quick money without all the hassle of the RNG. Now the beauty of this is that you require little to no gear. This is evident by what I've currently got equipped on this wizard. Now the wizard is level 57 and the reason for this being a higher level character is purely for the fact that it's going to allow you to go around these areas without aggroing the mobs and without getting killed considering you're going to have little to no gear on. This allows this technique to be used on alts and it allows you to leave your main in a different grind spot and if you just want to pick up some quick money then you can do this rotation or a couple of these rotations switch around it's going to guarantee you income with no rng barring some contested times it's definitely worth doing during the quietest periods but let's have a look at the pros and cons of this technique so as I've shown you, you need little to no gear. In fact, pretty much anybody that's just playing the game and has gone through the quest line, even somebody that's grinded to level 50 or above, you're going to have the gear for this. You don't need any pets, so this is easily the most free-to-play friendly way of making this kind of money. There aren't any other ways really that rely on no RNG that will net you in excess of 30 million silver an hour. So that leads on to the next one. This really doesn't rely on RNG, such as your accessory drops from higher level grind spots. This is pure, raw, predictable silver. It doesn't rely on any central marketplace sales, so there is no tax needed, which means you can also make this money without having a value pack. Overall, these are just some of the pros to this. Now the cons, however, are that this spot is really dependent on having the spot to yourself. People simply passing through and taking the mobs that you're going to be targeting will lower your income per hour. You're also required to service what, uh, switch a lot. So without having an SSD, you're gonna have slower server switches, which are gonna lower your income as well. It's also worth noting that if anybody else, even one person is doing any of these rotations while you're trying to do them, they become non-viable. By doing this, you'll both be impacting each other's income and it will drop significantly. And finally, there is no combat experience or skill experience, so this is non-progressive. Once you get past around level 50, you're not even going to notice the differences in terms of combat or skill experience. So although you're killing things, you're just not going to be progressing your character in a meaningful way. This is purely an income grind. All you're going to be getting from this is raw silver and the best time to do it is quiet times. Now the beauty of this is there are a couple of different rotations. So let's have a look at some of the main spots that I tend to do this rotation. Now first up is the Sawnil Camp and that's just south of Trina Fort next to Keplin. The second rotation that we're going to look at is up here at Marnie's Lab. Again, this is next to Keplin, which is going to be fundamental when it comes to doing a hand in. Another one of the viable spots is up at Bree Tree Ruins. And then the fourth one that I tend to use is Troll Fortification. Now, these two can be combined to be really effective. There is another spot worth mentioning, and this is a huge one. It's Manches, Catfish, and Rutum Elite. Now this spot isn't one that I tend to do myself purely because compared to the other areas this has a lot more footfall and a lot more traffic. So overall, although this can be effective, it's not highly advisable. Now you'll notice that one thing all these areas have in common is that they're relatively low areas. They're not end game grind spots which makes them accessible to pretty much anybody of level 50 or above. Now the reason that these become so efficient is because they all have one thing in common. And that one thing is elite, so things like the critical and the violent mobs. They appear as a star on your minimap, and these mobs drop one thing in common, and that is the Prognil Silver Bars. Now each one of these silver bars goes to the currency exchange in a storage, and sells for 20,000. There is no tax on these, which is the beauty of where the money comes from. So each mob drops anywhere between 9 and 12, depending on the area that you're grinding at. This means that each mob is worth 200,000 on average, and each of these spots has at least four mobs. That's 1.4 million per full rotation of a server of all four mobs. Now you can rotate each of the nine servers, which will bring you in on average 12.6 million, and you can actually complete these four times in an hour if you're very efficient, bringing in up to 50 million silver. Now this is where the caveat comes though, is if a single person comes and steals a mob, you effectively lose 200,000 for every mob that's not there. The respawn timer is also between 15 to 20 minutes and it can be a little bit sketchy. 
That's why I've said that on average you'll be earning around 30 million an hour as opposed to the 50. It is worth noting though that this is one of the major ways that I was able, able to make income during the early times of the game and it still is something that I use on occasion during quiet times to help boost my income. So let's go ahead and look at some of the rotations. Now first up is my favourite and it's Sawnil Camp. This is really simple, you start outside a Trina Fort and you kill the elite that's up by the catapults here. As you can see, dropping Taratas, Armor Stones, as well as those Prognal Bars, or Talis, sorry, not Taratas. Now second, we're going to head over to Elite number 2. We're going to walk down here, cross the road, and I'll show you on the, minim on the main map, sorry, in a second, where this second Elite is. It is worth having a fast mobile class, so Mooses are fantastic for this, Wizards and Witches because of their teleport and range as well. Now if you have a pet, you don't need to manually loot, which makes this quicker. But here's the second Elite. So we'll have a look, there you go on the map, it's just next to the water's edge. Now to go to the third elite, we're just going to follow the water around. So I'm just going to teleport around here and run over there. Now what I tend to do is once I get to the end of this rotation is I serve a switch and then I come back the opposite way. And I always remember which server I start and finish on. Now there have been times where I've been able to do one rotation, switch to an alt onto another rotation, clear half of that and come back. This really helped with the downtime between the server switches and the mobs respawning. So here's elite number three. It does occasionally like to bug inside of that um, wooden structure, which means that you have to mess around to try and get it. But more often than not, it'll just be stood out in the open in the field. And the fourth one's just across the road. It's not that far away at all. And it's at this point that I will stop server switch across and start again. Now, like I said, always try and remember the server that you start on and the server that you finish on. It helps as well if you've got a stopwatch on your phone or a timer so that you can time respawns. This is how I'm able to switch between multiple rotations and really make the most out of this. But as you'll have noticed, if you're paying attention, that pretty much all the prognal bars that they've been dropping are tens. So this is where the rotation ends. And again, like I said, you'd switch around, you'd change your server, and you'd go back. So there's nine servers in total. I tend to start with Balnos 1 and 2, then do Calfium 1 and 2, Serendia 1 and 2, and then we've got Medea, Valencia, Arsha. And I stop on Arsha, and then I start back at Balanos 1. But anyway, whatever works for you. Anyway, let's have a look at one of the other rotations that I use, Marnie's Lab. And again, we're targeting just the elites, so we're starting just up here by the Marnie Cave Pass. We're going to take out the first elite on this spot. Again, if you pay attention, what you'll see is it's 12 prognal bars from this elite. So again, that's 20,000 apiece, so it's already 240,000 that we've made from that. We're going to come across here and drop down off the edge of this cliff and that's where we're going to pick up elite number two. Now the thing to note about Marnie Cave compared to Sawnil is that the elites are a little bit more spread apart. So this having a mobile class is really where it's going to help. Witches and wizards like I said teleport or double teleport is definitely something that's going to help you get around. Mooses with chase as well. Lawns are another good class for this because of their ability to literally jump around. Um, but pretty much any class can do this. You don't really need to be hypermobile, but it does help. Tamers with Haylang as well is another example of a class that's really going to excel at being able to get around this place quickly. Um, bringing a mount doesn't necessarily work though. It just tends to be too slow getting on and off the mount. So it's not something that I'd advise doing. But having a teleport definitely helps. But you just follow the path around, down the edge of the cliff, stick to the right hand side and you'll pick up elite number three. Again, more prognal bars. You're also getting a relatively high value trash item from these mobs. Unfortunately, you don't get the same look that you do at Sawnil with terms of the armor pieces dropping, which can drop as enhanced and often do, which means that you can extract a large amount of black stones from them, or you can melt down or sell the talus on the marketplace if you want to, but that does factor in tax. I tend to just vendor them or melt them down into usable materials for life skilling. Now, we're going to go up and pick up the fourth elite. This is a little bit of a long trek. Now, you do get to completely avoid the maze at Marnie's. You don't have to go into this maze because we can jump over a fence. But the last elite that we're going to pick up is at the actual Marnie's lab node, and it's just in a little or through a little arch. But we'll get around to there in a second. Just follow this around the outside of the maze. There's no point in going in there. It takes a lot longer. I have done some testing trial in the different times. But you come around to the back, and we're going to climb up these rocks jump over the fence and like I said with the sawnel post what I'll do is once I get to the end here I'll then turn around and go back um, 
With this though, what I'll do is I'll jump over the fence and go back to the first elite rather than going back down the cliff because obviously you can't jump up the cliff. But this is the fourth elite. I'm going to kill this. We're going to pick up the 11 prognal bars. And normally I'd run out of here and I'd jump back over the fence and then I'd go back to the start. Now I think you get the idea with the rotation so I won't show you any of the others, you can work them out for yourself and I'm very aware that this video is already over 10 minutes so we're going to skip now to where I show you what I've actually earned. Now keep in mind that I've only done one server on each of these spots for the sake of this video. But we're going to run over to Keplum, we're going to turn in the bars, we're going to also look at the other things that dropped, I have no idea what dropped and when I was doing this but looking back at the footage I'm actually quite impressed so the income is definitely where I'm seeing is and this is just a little bit of proof for you I've only killed eight mobs so we're going to turn in the prognal bars first at the currency exchange like you can see here decent amount 101 prognal bars off eight mobs that's two million and twenty thousand silver now we're going to go and sell the trash as well normally I'd let this stuff build up it does tend to really clog your inventory with armor pieces when you're doing the sawnel spot, but any of the other spots tends to be a lot more forgiving. But we're going to sell off this trash as well and have a look at where we end up in terms of raw silver. So we'll sell off some of the junk pieces, the talus that dropped, and we'll get rid of the other pieces there as well. And there is a plus nine that dropped, so we're going to extract that for the nine armor stones, and we made two weapon stones as well. So that's easily another million from those based off the current marketplace prices even after the tax with a value pack. So overall, just from those eight mobs, we've made over three million silver. As you can see, this is a really, really, really good way to make money. Are there better spots? Potentially, yes. Is this without its own cons? Definitely not. There are pros and cons to all the grind spots. Now this may be more contested following this video, I doubt I have that much reach though, so go out there, knock yourselves out, make some money. This is my first video back guys, so show it some love. As always, thanks very much for the support, I've been getting subs consistently even though I've been away from making content. Now there will be a ton more coming this week and leading up to Christmas and into the new year. I am definitely back, I am definitely making content and I have a few surprises for my subscribers and people watching my channel. There is a lot of news still to come and there is definitely a lot more life in this old warhorse. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.